it's just this guy today coming at you on Lancaster Connects, episode 70. Lancaster Gives Back. Very excited for our guest today. We're going to be talking all about giving back and the importance of local small business being a part of that, really propelling the give back forward for the communities that they serve. But uh, thanks for tuning in here to Lancaster Connects, episode 70. Very much appreciate you. This is the show all about small business here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and the surrounding area. Really kind of the show about David versus Goliath, the battle on Main Street, big versus small. So we're going to be talking about some of those smaller charities today and how big things happen when we all come together later on this month. We'll touch on that. So um, it is just me that, you know, the beauty of small family owned businesses when family needs you at home and you've got a well-run business with a great team like we have here. One of the owners gets to stay home and that's what uh, Ben's doing today. So you just have me. Hopefully you like that. I think you will. I think you will, because I think so. Anyway, uh, you can win a restaurant gift card here on the show by commenting in the comments. Uh, at the end of the show, we'll fire up prize later and get that running and draw a winner at random. Or, uh, I'm sorry, your prize for commenting, that is, is a $25 restaurant gift card to a local restaurant or really cool hydro flask or coffee tumbler. So hydro flask, coffee tumbler. Uh, from our store, Less Storm, More Cuddle. Those things are really great. If you want to get your water intake up, drink about three of these a day. You'll feel a lot better, a lot loose, a lot less stiff, sleep better. So that's why we offer them. Your choice, one of the uh, drinkware pieces or the gift card just for commenting. And we'll spin the wheel at random and see if you win at the end of the show. So uh, we uh, also broadcast the show out YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, where you're watching it. Uh, you can also catch it pretty much on anything that is internet connected and plays video just by searching Lancaster Connects. And then by this time next week, you'll be able to take it in on all the audio podcast players too, searching the same Lancaster Connects. So uh, usually if you've been watching lately, Ben and I sit here and banter about local sport. Well, not local sports, but sports that we like, um, you know, sitting, it was nice to sit uh, Sunday uh, with a win under our belt in week nine. Uh, so the Philadelphia Eagles, my team is 8-0. Very happy about that. We get to sit next Sunday at 8-0 as well because we play Monday night against the Washington Commanders. So we'll see how all that plays out. But um, the Philadelphia Phillies uh, ended up not winning the World Series. Although, little factoid, if you paid attention to the news, you saw the uh, fellow furniture and mattress guy, Mattress Mac in Houston, Texas of Gallery Furniture made a big old bet for the Astros to win. Uh, Mattress Mac is someone that I know in the industry, an industry friend of mine. Uh, he is a professional gambler, I guess you could say, because he took home a big old war chest of $75 million off of that win. So happy for him, happy for the fans in Houston. It's always nice when your team gets to win. But um, that's about what we got. We're going to get into the show here in a minute. Uh, I want to touch on something and then I'll circle back to it later because it ties directly in with what our guest is doing. Um, we believe in supporting the community that supports us. So one of those things we're doing is a mattress uh, donation all throughout the holidays. I'll touch on that a little later, but I wanted to kick off the show and bring on our guest, Mark Ponce, on a note of giving back. Uh, Mark, welcome to the show. Mark's been Thank on you, our Jeff. show before. Yeah, happy to have you. Um you know, so Mark is the publisher owner of Fine Living Lancaster, uh, also is in the mortgage business. So if you need to navigate that right now, which I'm sure if you are, you have lots of questions. Mark would be a fantastic connection and a recommended connection there as well. But um, we're here today to really talk about, you know, giving back and why you know, why that's important. Uh, so Mark, I'm going to just throw it to you. Like you're, you're a local small business owner. Um, mm -hmm. You've taken up uh, the charge, so to say, of making sure people are focused on giving back. Why is that so important to you? So Jeff, I mean, the extraordinary give is coming up, which is an amazing thing that, that Lancaster does and generates, you know, millions of dollars in, in help for worthy organizations it's something to be incredibly proud of as a community. And I think what happens with that is uh, sometimes people don't know exactly who to give to or why they would want to give to them. So maybe they, they don't give at all. 
Um, so last year we started the new tradition of the fine giving section in our last issue of the year, the holiday issue, to highlight some uh, what we believe to be worthy causes, uh, worthy of consideration for your donations. And uh, we've done it again this year, and we have a selection of some fine organizations in there for people to read about and consider. And then as we were putting the issue to print, uh, I always write my publisher's letter at the last minute, um, not because I'm a procrastinator, but because you don't know what makes sense to write about until you're just about at print. And uh, literally wasn't sure, sat down and went like this. And what came out was what we're calling the $40 challenge. Okay, cool. So uh, I like how you kind of wait to write your publisher's letter till the, I guess you could say the magazine is a piece of artwork every time, right? Uh, I'll take kind that. Of, kind of each issue kind of has its own life. It, you you mm -hmm. go in with a theme, but then the theme expands. So I kind of like how you're doing that. So out of this was born the $40 challenge. So tell us about that. Indeed it was. So it's a long story. I'll try and make it not too long. Um, but there's, there's an old question that gets asked all the time when gas prices start to change. And that is how, what price does gas per gallon have to hit before you change your driving habits? Mm -hmm. um, and it's a tough question to answer because at a certain point in time, you have to go where you have to go. You might make less recreational choices, uh, but it's not like you can't, you can't go. If you are a person that has to go to the office, you can't not go to the office. Uh, if right. you have to go to your job, you can't not go to your job. People, your salespeople can't not come there. Um, if you have to so, deliver mattresses on a box truck with right, exactly, six, that's perfect. That's perfect. Six dollar diesel, you have to deliver mattresses. <laughs> Doesn't matter what diesel costs, you can't say sorry that right. the, the fuel's too expensive. That said, uh, before the pandemic, um, I was fairly well established in making a daily stop at a coffee shop. Uh, that we won't particularly name, but it's just the one I happen to stop at and get a very, very, very large iced coffee. And I would do that every day, five days a week. And if I work, if I worked weekends at the office, I would do it then too. Uh, I enjoy it. It's, it's something I can afford. So why not? And I was recently uh, talking to my dear friend, Penn Ketchum of Penn Cinema, who is a fellow coffee hound. And this conversation came up about the price of coffee. And the thing is, when I used to do this pre-pandemic, that coffee I bought cost about $3.85. Right. And at some point, it went up, and then it went up, and then it went up. And now it, then it was like $4.20. And I'm like, all right, that's, that's not that big a difference, and I enjoy it. I wasn't going every day anyway because I was working from home. But then it went over $5. And in it... That that seemed to be something that changed my thoughts. Not that I didn't want coffee anymore, but is there a different way to go about this? Because you can buy coffee from this particular company in a take-home container at the grocery store, and for then five dollars, now about six fifty, you get about two and a half days worth of coffee. Right. And so I changed my habits. I still go, but I don't go out of my way. Um, you know, I don't I don't leave the house if I don't need to if I'm working from home just to go get a coffee. I just use what I have here. Right. But then I thought, if you're not going to spend that money, why not do something better with it? You're accustomed to spending it. So, so why not do something better with it? So that's where the $40 challenge comes from. And the dollar amount is simply assuming you're spending $5 on a coffee, two days a week, don't get coffee. I mean, drink coffee, enjoy your coffee. Don't because we'll all get cranky if we don't, but right. drink your coffee at home, put that $5 aside. And at the end of the month, that's $40 if you don't do it twice a week. Right. And then instead of pocketing that $40, which don't get me wrong, savings is great, but you were going to spend that money, give it to somebody, give it to a, an organization that's making a difference in our community and help them make that difference. And imagine if just 10% of the people that read fine living 10% of the people that watch your podcast, 10% of the people that you come in contact with that you talk about this with, just 10% yep. of everybody that this touches is I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna give $40 a month, every month, all year to a different charity. What an amazing difference that will make. The extraordinary give is fantastic, but it's so big 
and at once. Yeah, it's very hyper focused on a singular right. singular day. It's a day long right. thing, and you know, I think they've eclipsed the ten million dollar mark, right? Millions and millions of dollars, but right. but that's not millions and millions of dollars to one place. And all of these organizations don't just need money in November, right? So let's make sure they have some money every month. Yep. Well, and forty dollars. I mean, yes, that's a it's forty dollars, and for everybody listening, that forty dollars means something a little different to those listening. Sure. Uh, but there's a lot that charities can do with that money. I know we donate to Charity Water uh, here at Gardeners because that was part of a program. You know, you know I'm in a lot of business owner, you know, peer to peer type groups where we collaborate, and the leader of one of these groups. That's his thing. He's very passionate about charity water. So we got something a little extra if we donated to charity water. Well, that was two years ago. And we've been drilling a well somewhere in Africa um, or wherever the world needs fresh water. Uh, they dictate it. But we've been doing that. And I think the number is actually $40 specifically. Um, yeah. But we've been doing that uh, for at least 24 months now. Um, That's awesome. And we like it. We like supporting our friend that uh, gives us some great insight and information and leads that group well. And we like doing good when we can. So I think really what you're saying is get intentional and just kind of create it and then like, you know, do the Ron Popeil uh, set it and forget it thing. Right? Forget it. Get yeah. habitual. Once once you do something with it three times, four times, it becomes a habit. So you're just in the habit. And we're incentivizing people a little bit in that um, if they want to know where I'm giving uh, each month, and I'll be starting this month in November. Um, it will post it on our social media, but um, in the the item that you posted on our website, flmag.com, um, people can get this contact information. But if they email me by the end of the month, uh, I'll have a mailing list, and every month when I make the donation, I'll notify via that mail list. But but we're also giving uh, opportunity to a few people that if they really want to get excited about this. If they let us know they're going to do it and they post it every month with the hashtag $40 challenge, any social media, but send it to us that they did it. Um, we're going to approach three to five people uh, end of next summer and we're going to put them in the next issue. I'm telling you, in the fine giving issue next year mm -hmm. and list everybody that they gave to and give them credit for being diligent about it. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Very good. So for you, um, like, what is your, if I may ask, what is mm -hmm. your process for picking the charities that you like to support? Because there are so, so many, right? Yeah, there, well, there's a lot. So, and and we've gotten to know so many through doing the fine giving and, and just from having fine living published now for 16 years. Um, and I, I, I personally tend to uh, lean towards things that support children, families, or education. Um, doesn't mean it's the only thing I would give to, but, right. um, and, and that covers a lot of bases. Uh, Girls on the Run is featured in this issue. Um, you know, certainly uh, for a younger set, it's health. Uh, they're doing excellent work and have been for a long time. So, yeah, but I, I tend to, in my own personal giving, lean towards, you know, children and family supporting charities. Yeah. Yep. Very good. Yeah. For us here, it's, it's really about, we like supporting the charities that are kind of like that owner operator led mm -hmm. charity, right? So the person that founded it still runs it. It's not, may not be their full-time job. Therefore the dollars really are impactful. Um, you know, they serve a very special subset of people like, you know, Aaron's acres for, for children on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. and learning disabilities um, and they have a big goal too, like a really big goal to continue to expand their camps for more than just one six week duration in summer to year round to expanding, uh, older age groups, you know, because so much in that space, uh, ends at high school ends at like 18 mm -hmm. to 21. But, you know, these are folks that need help all throughout their adult life, um, you know, and so like, we like, we really like that as well. I'm a big softy for pets, you know, <laughs> so we like to do uh, pet give back when we can and, and really yeah, make it a commercial here. If you want to be on this show, 
lancasterconnects.com slash um, guest uh, starts the process. So if you know charities, if you are with a charity and you want to be on this show, um, let's uh, let's definitely have you uh, have you on. Um, yeah, no, I like how you're how you're choosing that. So um, let's talk about your fine giving issue um, and some of the specific charities that are in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, yeah, we talked a little bit about it, but I had mentioned um, uh, Girls on the Run is in is in this issue. Let me find them here. You'd think you know where everything was just by <laughs> by having looked at it, oh, I don't know, 75,000 times. Um, right, right. There we and while you so find we that, people, I know. So we have Girls yeah. on the Run in this issue, talking about that's some of the some lovely people that, uh, that work there. Uh, we have... Um, and... And Ben and I were talking about that because his daughter Amelia has done a couple of their uh, marathons and events. Um, was that started locally? I believe that it was. Um, yeah, we've, we've helped them and and publicized them quite a bit over the years. And the women that we met that started it, um, they aren't as actively involved in it any, anymore, and it's grown substantially because initially it was two ladies, and now it's you know. When I went out to do the photograph, that well, you saw there was all those, you know, lovely women um, mm-hmm. doing the good work there. So, uh, but I believe it was initially local. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, I, I've seen friends on Facebook far and wide posting um, posting pictures from various uh, various events. So, um, yeah, good for them. Uh, really cool that it's it's not just about running a marathon; it's about developing the uh, confidence to do so. Obviously, the health. Uh, goal setting, all of that's very cool that comes along with it, which I think is very important for youth today. Um, and then, you know, it's cool that it's uh, specifically focused on young ladies. So that's very yeah. nice. I like that. Um, I know there's another one where you're specifically supporting. I think I saw in the in the back and forth leading up to our time today, Gifts That Give Hope. Gifts That Give Hope is, is a long-term um, charity that we are proud to support. Um, to the extent that it started with my wife uh, buying a goat for her mother for Christmas one year. Uh, So uh, for those that don't know, we didn't actually buy a goat and deliver to her house. We bought a goat. We donated enough money for a goat for a family in a uh, less fortunate country than the United States and uh, gave it in the name of my mother-in-law. I won't get into her reaction to that, but uh, it's it's a wonderful (laughs) thing. And they are doing incredible work. Right. Yeah. That's uh, Jen Nepper, correct? Jen Nepper. Yep. Jen's been on the show before um, and actually is connected. If, if I'm thinking correctly, her husband was part of another organization company that was on our show. Um, so kind of kind of neat how family and charity and friends come together here on the show. I always like that. That's fun. Well, it is it is um, still Lancaster and it's only so big. So. Yeah, but it keeps getting bigger, right? Like oh, yeah, we fair were enough. Just, you know, the, we keep getting these awards. What was it? One of the financial magazines just gave another number one spot. Yeah, I think they like Liditz. Uh I think that Liditz. particular one like Liditz per se. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the we're the Brooklyn of this. We're the we're the Austin of that. We're just here. We are. We're Lancaster. That's all we are. Yeah, I, I often say Austin. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I know you're it's like Austin, smaller. A lot of music. A lot of culture. A lot of art. A lot of food. Mm-hmm. Um, it was interesting. I was driving. Uh, my wife and I stayed down in um, like Aberdeen, you know, Bay Area over the weekend. We're driving home uh, Sunday, uh, Sunday late morning, and we passed uh, like Willow Street area. And I said, "Yeah, this is where," because we were talking about our youngest son going to Career Center. Well, like, yeah, the Lancaster Career Center is just down the street. And uh, I said, all of this was never here. It was just nothing but flat farmland. Yep. Um, and now it's all built up because uh, we keep on expanding within our county, which is good. It's good. And we've got the farmland trust to ensure we keep what we need there. But um, no, Lancaster is always growing. And I think it's because of this kind of focus that makes it 
uh, one of these attractive places to move to, to retire to, to live in. Um, you know, businesses like yourself, like us, with a consistent focus on making sure the communities that we do business in thrive and um, stay supported. Uh, so, what I mean, what else do you like about building this into what you do with with Fine Living Lancaster? The the magazine itself or the charity component? Uh, the charity, well, both. I mean, I was specifically asking about the charity component. So that's fine. So so the thing with fine living is it's not it's not how I create my own source of income. It's it's it started out because I I saw it I felt that there was a need that needed to be fulfilled and and so we so we filled it. Um, I was pleased and this and we launched in the um, in 2007, which was you know just a year before the big financial crisis, and. Um, Somebody gave me a compliment one time about the fact that I that I launched something brand new just before, you know, the, everything fell down and kept it going and kept people employed. Um, and so that that's a source of pride. And I think we keep it going simply because two reasons. Number one, we still like doing it. Uh, number two, the entire staff now is is family. So my daughter is the managing editor. My son is our is our designer. My wife is our chief writer. Uh, and my future son-in-law does photo editing for us. So we do have saw some freelancers, but it's, it's literally a family, you know. Oh, that's very cool. A family joint, as Spike Lee would say. Um, so <laughs> we, we keep it going because A, we like doing it. B, we like letting people know the cool stuff we're finding. And, and really, A, number one is so we can do stuff like this. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I like it. Um, question we have from Amy, is there a museum of modern art in Lancaster? New York City says they have the only one, but I'm holding out hope for another. So you would maybe be more clued into the museums. In the yeah, area. so we don't we don't have a junior MoMA, Amy. <laughs> Not that I wouldn't love it as well. Uh, we've got some fun museums. We've got, you know, the Lancaster Art Museum uh, downtown. We've got the uh, Oh shoot! The the one over by the college that's the science museum. Um, it's not it's not the science museum. It's yeah, I'm blanking out. But there is a there is a museum of interesting scientific things over by F and M College, and then there's the Lancaster Science Factory uh, over by McCaskey. So there's a lot of very cool museum things, just not an exact uh, mini MoMA. Right. I like that. Maybe we should make that trending. Hashtag mini MoMA. That's the <laughs> that's the one my wife would, would do. <laughs> right. Like it. So let, let's dig into that because, um, you know, we've obviously been aware of Fine Living Lancaster here at Gardner's for our time here. Um, I really like that now it's become a family thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I remember your daughter. Is it Maddie? Is that Maddie? Her? Maddie. Yep. I mean, I remember she was doing some photography uh, throughout maybe high school, college years. Is that right? No, she was writing. She was my, writing. Okay. My son uh, does photography and uh, is a graduate of the Corcoran School of Art um, in D.C. with a fine art uh, photography degree. What's the hilarious thing is as much as he loves photography, he drifted into design and, um, and I drifted into photography. So the, I, sh I didn't mention, but... 90% of the photography in the magazine is me. Um, okay. So it's, yeah. So it's, I'd, I'd like to say we're a creative family. I, I don't, it sounds immodest to say it myself, but um, right. You know, I, I, the, pr the proof is here all these right. pages every time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really neat that it's become kind of like a Ponce family mission. So to say a family all in the family joint. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Um, that's very and, neat. And, the let me interject, Jeff. The um, mm -hmm. fine giving, I think I named it, but the idea was Maddie's last year. She go, she said, We really need to do more. We're doing some, but we need to do some more. So that's where that came from. Yeah. Um, I want to get back to that in a minute. Um, you know, you've had the opportunity over the years to showcase family owned companies, um, and that and you see the generations of families, uh, that have like come through your pages. So it must be pretty neat to see now that your family is supporting the publication and the, the shine on that, so to say. Yeah. Yeah, no, everything it's, it's wonderful to see the generations of, of a business. Well, it's funny cause I'm sitting here and I see my watch in the, in the screen and this is from Brent Miller, which obviously is now 
mostly run second generation. Ryan Miller's running that. Um, we, we recently, unfortunately, had need of uh, Snyder Funeral Homes, and that's third generation now. Um, and it's nice to see the businesses here in Lancaster that really destroy that terrible old saying of the first generation creates it, second generation mm. enjoys it, and third generation ruins it. Um, which we yeah. don't see here, you know, uh, Snyder's a great example of that. I believe to be third generation and, and growing and doing, you know, excellent work. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually, you know, I just responded to a customer review on that about, uh, not on that specifically, but similar themed, uh, this customer moved from Connecticut. One of our manufacturers, gold bond mattresses based in Hartford mm -hmm. and, um, or Weston, just outside of Hartford, but they were very familiar with the product and were just elated that it was A, still available, B, still run by the same family, uh, and, and that they could experience it here right in Lancaster. So it was kind of neat to be able to give them uh, a little bit of experience of a, of a home here in their new home in Lancaster. Uh, but that company is a fourth generation, uh, which is very rare, very rare in our industry because so often these companies get picked up and bought by equity banks and spun into other things and then ruined. Uh, hmm. but yeah, we have we have multiple uh, three different factories on the floor that are in their at least third generation of ownership, which is which is neat, you know, because we like yeah. to say we can't we can't be a five star company hooked to three star partners. We like to say that, so we got to have good. Exactly right good partners. And we have a Chad Snyder, Snyder fan from yeah, the, clearly <laughs> Steve Goble uh, from the Goble group here in town who just put on a great event, live to lead. Um, so be maybe looking for that next year from Steve, but Steve, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Um, so I wanted to circle back to this. So it was your daughter uh, who came up with the fine giving issue. So what was that like carving? So you produce four issues a year. Is that right? We did, six? we did. We, we, We've taken the let's see what the year tells us uh, okay. approach after the pandemic. Um, we, we were doing four and then the year of the pandemic, we did two and a digital issue. Uh, and then that seemed good. So we did two this year. Uh, I think next year we'll probably do three. Um, you know, it really we don't want to. I hate to say it this way, but it seems like. When we came out, there was another publication that came out re right around the same time. And all of a sudden, there's like, Lancaster is lousy with magazines. I don't know why. And I don't even mean that disrespectfully. It's just like, but there's a neighborhood has a magazine. I mean, how much how much paper do you need to put out there? So <laughs> we're, we're holding for quality content and yep. not just to meet a schedule of, oh, we got to get something out there. So let's throw stuff in. We'll never do less than two. We'll never do more than four. But right. if there's if there's stories to tell, we'll tell them. Right, right. So I get my question then is obviously this is a this is fifty percent of your issue for the year. But what's it mean for you to be able to have a whole issue dedicated to this topic, giving back? Well, it's it it means that we're you know doing the right thing in the universe. And and in all fairness, it's not a hundred percent a giving issue. It's a it's. It is the giving right. issue. Our, our cover story is actually about a baker who's a wonderful lady uh, and a salt and light bakery. So, um, you know, that's not really a charity. It's a charity for your belly. Um, I can promise you that. Uh, <laughs> if and, that's you know, the case, so if that's the case I'm the most, if it's charity for your belly, if it's charity for your belly, I'm the most uh, giving person in Lancaster County. Yeah, fair enough. We might, we might <laughs> try for that. Um, but you know, and there's still music and there's still, <laughs> uh, there's still, you know, the things that make it fine living. Um, you know, there's a story about a very cool and unusual medical practice that's new in the area. So it's not just that, but the point being is it, it's a strong focus of it. And obviously we're having this conversation because this is what we want people to know about. And also when you're enjoying it, please enjoy reading about Salt and Light and uh, Alexa Cunningham, uh, the, the musician. So, uh, yeah. It's still, it's still fine living. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, so the $40 challenge, um, we'll kind of wrap up on that. So again, you're challenging everybody. Look, look for a couple places. Maybe those indulgences cut back one or two a week. You know, maybe it's uh maybe it's one less meal out with the family cook that at home, 
keep the difference, give that to charity. Um, so again, we can go to fllmag.com, pull up $40 challenge right there. Yep. And you're going to be highlighting people next year as a result of their efforts throughout the year. So right. In, in the print that. issue, we will have three to five different people or, or couples or families that have taken on the challenge and stuck with the challenge throughout the course of the year and kept in contact with us. Uh, you know, we want to feature them. They'll, I mean, obviously, full photo, full page feature about them and why they chose to do it and who they chose for their donations. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you can really make change by just doing a little bit if it's consistent. One of the things I'll talk about later on the show is our roundup, uh, roundup to give back challenge. And uh, it's kind of like no different when you go to the drugstore or the grocery store and they ask you to round up your ten dollars and eighty seven cents to eleven bucks, right? Right. Uh, for us, it's a couple. It's not pennies. It's a couple of dollars or more. But um, yeah, we we intentionally look to carve out and make ways to give back constantly in our business. And I would challenge everybody else listening and watching to do the same. I think that's, uh, I think that's always a good thing. Uh, maybe that's where we can wrap up. What, or, and I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you see, or might be want to acknowledge any other businesses that do that where they intentionally, these are local businesses intentionally have ways of engaging their customer base to give back and contribute back to the community? Gotcha. No, I mean, I, I can't, unfortunately, off the, off the cuff, I can't think of anybody. I'm sure that, you know, any of the good family owned businesses are doing things. They just may not be making a big, a big noise about it. Um, right. You know, and there's, there's a lot of, you know, uh, privately owned retail spaces in the county uh, that are all doing good things. Um, you know, I would, I would say ask, you know, if there's, a, if there's a shop you like, ask what they do. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have acorn acres which man they were on the show so are you familiar with acorn acres mm -hmm. not to be with Aaron acres because i confused the heck out of the two a couple <laughs> weeks back i was i didn't even know who i was interviewing at one point i was just flip flopping. one is it one is a child one falls out of a tree <laughs> well see that doesn't really help because that could be both well, days. Some days. <laughs> kids fall out of trees fair enough <laughs> right <laughs> but um but anyway uh uh, Acorn Acres, uh, Poppy, the Emmy Award winning Groundhog uh, was, or Emmy nominated, was uh, tuning in with us. So we uh, we love supporting your local efforts as well there at Acorn Acres. I almost messed it up. Uh, and we love Aaron's Acres too, for that fact. But, all the uh, acres. All of them. We love all the acres. Yes, that's right. That's right. Mark, this has been a joy. Uh, so FLLMag.com, if you want all things digital for Fine yep. Living Lancaster. But where can people get a copy in print? How do they get that? Um, I would. Uh, I know that Bobby Ray Hall Lexus, a great company, and uh, certainly does the right things as far as the, as the universe is concerned. Um, they have just got a fresh delivery of copies. Uh, Penn Cinema usually has a substantial amount of copies. We restock them Thursday or Friday. Uh, the fun thing about that is at Penn Cinema, uh, the image you saw on the website of the coffee cup and everything, um, that's actually been made into a sticker and there's 50 left. And I will be making sure those are left at Penn Cinema on Thursday or Friday when we deliver the magazine uh, for this weekend's big uh, Black Panther movie goers there it is right there so i know it's going to be a busy weekend at the movies with black panther and there's going to be 50 of those stickers if you like stickers uh no charge please feel free but you got to get to Penn cinema to get it that's right and if you're going to take the sticker and affix the sticker somewhere participate in the challenge right yep and tell all your friends why and they should do it too yep 100 percent 100%. Well, look, Mark, man, really enjoyed our time together. Uh, enjoyed you. having you back yeah. on. I love the fact that you're intentionally making, uh, giving back and challenging others to do the same part of what you do at Fine Living Lancaster and in all the endeavors, endeavors, sorry, that you're a part of. So, man, it's been a joy. Um, Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. Let everybody get to know you a little bit here. we got a few questions for you with our connection cocktail. Usually it's back and forth between Ben and I, but I'm just going to take the lead because I'll Let's be still here solo. So, um, and I, I like this one for folks like you because it kind of puts you on the spot. What's their favorite thing to do in Lancaster? 
My favorite thing to do in Langston. So th that's a that's a little bit of a of a loaded answer. You heard a loaded question. That's a loaded answer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also I'm also a musician. I play in a band called Bailey Run, and my favorite thing to do in Langston is play music. So uh, Langston likes music, and I and we have great places to do it. Um, there's a lot of amazing bands. Again, my name is Bailey Run. Uh, that's Bailey Run on Spotify. Please feel free to stream us. Um, and uh, that's my favorite thing to do, in, unless I'm doing something with my family, of course, which is always number one. But number two is to get to play music in Langster for people in Langster that love music. And that's play music with Bailey Run. Right. On Spotify, Bailey Run. Well, li play live in Langster. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah. There we go. But you can you can yeah you can hear it first on uh, Spotify and then come enjoy it live. Yep, yep, very good. Uh, all right, like that. Um, favorite annual event that you go to? Uh, I, li I like the give. I really like the give. I like the give, and I like the the lighting of the Christmas tree. Um, but that's uh, that's specific, the, you know, to a holiday thing. If you just want to say what's a fun thing, the, I like the give because it's like a giant party. Uh, for the best possible cause. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And and I'll just, again, add to that. I, I forget the total last year, but I know it was over. I'm pretty sure it was over 10 million. I believe it was over 10. And it wasn't that long ago that, you know, that total was in the three or 4 million range, which is which still was, a lot of money. Exactly, you know? which is amazing. But the fact that throughout good years and bad years and pandemic years, Lancaster has sought to raise that bar year over year is just a, a pat on the back to the whole community, which I think is great. Oh, there we go. 13 and a half million last year. So we stand corrected. Good job. Extraordinary give. Okay. And last part, what part of Lancaster do you impart on friends and family when you're, uh, when they're in from out of town? So I have, I have some friends from uh, the in California, they're musician friends and, the first time I brought them here, I was driving them back to the airport and we went through Strasburg and they lost their mind seeing the buggies. So like literally with the phones and yeah. um, with, with, so it's fun to show them that. But generally downtown and Lidditz are the two are the two. If you don't know anything about Lancaster, we'll drive you through the farms and then we'll take you to downtown Lancaster and or Lidditz to have some food and walk around. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I was just. At the Bulls Head the other week with my wife for a drink, um, and uh, had a very good. Uh, what was it, Elijah Craig? Some special batch thing. Yeah. Well, so, next next time, wander over to uh, Blackworth, and uh, there's some pretty pretty great stuff going on at Blackworth right now. All right, I'll have yeah. to check that out. There we go. All right, Mark. Look, this has been a real pleasure hanging with you, having you on the show. Um, Thank you. Check out the $40 challenge at FLLMag.com. We'd love to see you, one of our listeners. You know, you're kind of getting some advanced notice here, I guess you could say, or some reinforced notice and urging to participate. I'd love to see if one of our folks, one of our fans became one of those challenge winners and got featured in well, the magazine. Let, let's do it this way. You guys are great. You do so much for the community. Let's tell your listeners and your, your viewers right now. If you uh, go on to find FLLMag.com, read how to contact me, send me a contact, tell me you are a Langster Connects listener, and obviously do the challenge, I guarantee that one of your uh, viewers slash listeners will be in the magazine. There we go. Year, celebrated for their charity work. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. Mark, this has been a joy. Uh, thank thank you. you. Yep. Thanks for joining us and being on the show today. Uh, I hope the extraordinary give day is fantastic for you. I'm sure you'll make it as such, but, uh, and have a great holiday too. And you as well. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, listen, if you want to be on the show, we've already said it once. I'll say it again. LancasterConnects.com slash guest is where you go. Um, and fill out that form and we'll get you on the show. That kind of kicks things off and gets you in line with our team. And then we get you booked on a date and we have you on the show right like this. So I've got some business to do. It's rare we do business, but we're going to do some business here on the show for the remainder of our time together. Um, so I said, I talked about this previously. So we have something that we do here called Gardeners Gives Back. It's kind of our charitable vehicle, uh, our charitable umbrella, so to say. 
And what we're doing now throughout the holiday season is what we're calling Gardeners Gives Back, Buy One, Give One. And the Gardeners Gives Back, Buy One, Give One program is really about you're buying a mattress and then we're going to give one back to uh, the local community. And we're going to do that through uh, off the streets. All right. So buy one, give one. Uh, we're going to donate a mattress to off the streets and off the streets is a wonderful charity here that gets people out of homelessness, uh, helps them secure housing. It's a hand up, not a handout program. And they really work with the family to get them into a great place that they can sustain and get out of homelessness. So we've already ordered a bunch of mattresses, quality mattresses. This is stuff that we would put our own children on. You really can't tell from the screen that they're uh, what that is in the box, but that is a box mattress. We actually sell quite a few of those overall, but um, these are quality mattresses that any child, any teenager, any parent, mom and dad is going to be real happy and comfortable to sleep on because what good sleeping in a house when you can't get good sleep. And uh, so we help them with that. So that's what buy one, give one's all about. So what we're asking uh, you to do uh, throughout the next couple of months is really come in and support that through what we call our roundup effort. Again, I talked with, talked about this earlier. So gardeners, uh, gives back the roundup help out function. This is where you become our customer. And let's say your invoice uh, rounds out to $997 and 50 cents. All right. You're going to donate 250 to make that an even thousand dollars. So that $2 and 50 cents goes into the pool of money. And that's where we go and buy those mattresses. That's where we go and give donations and uh, specifically the roundup money uh, more often than not, although for the remainder of the year, we're designating it towards giving back money for the mattresses uh, up through this month. It's gone to area food banks. Okay. So uh, roundup is rounding up those dollars to a, a whole number. Uh, can be a dollar, can be $20, could be a hundred dollars. We've got people do all of that, anything in between. Uh, this is your opportunity to uh, just kind of extend your gratitude, um, make your invoice a nice, even round number just like it is at the grocery store or the pharmacy. And uh, you also then help out. And then we get that money to either food banks or throughout the rest of the year, the holidays, we're going to donate that towards getting more mattresses for off the streets. All right. When we look at our sales, let's just say it that way. When we look to offer sales here in the store, uh, we created something called double deals. Double deals is a really great way. You get to pick your discounts and you maximize your savings. All right. Um, this is something that as a business owner, for me, uh, one of our core values here is integrity. And we always want to treat every customer that comes in the door the same way. I don't want any one customer looking at another customer that got the same mattress in the same size and thinking, well, I got the better deal than my neighbor Joe did. Double Deals stops that. Double Deals gives you the discounts that work for you, for your situation, for your needs. Our team is able to present the savings opportunities to you and they work with you to maximize those savings based on what your needs are. Maybe you can pick something up so you don't need delivery. Maybe you're getting a king and you have a queen now, so a size upgrade makes sense. These discounts are aligned to give everybody maximum savings and there's two lists of discounts, thus the name double deals. And you can get more of that information on our website, gardenersmattressandmore.com slash sales. And all of that information is right on there. But again, we're going to help you maximize those savings. And my team will sit here and they'll really point out the different paths. Well, this path, you know, going that way might make sense at first, but going this way, you're going to save an extra hundred dollars or $50, whatever it might be. Uh, so that's double deals. All right. Gardeners, mattress, and more.com slash sales. You know, we're the guys that wrote the book, right? So we wrote the book sleep better. So sleep better really was another mission to say, we are really here to help. We are really the store that is willing to give you a lot of great information. We've researched this information compiled from my 20 years in this industry on how to, you know, create a sleep routine, create good sleep habits, have good sleep hygiene. And when you get this book, uh, we've had a few people get this book and they say that ultimately, um, 
they don't need to buy a mattress because the information has been so great that they improve their sleep routine and their sleep habits and they're feeling better. That's how good the book is. So I'd love for you to get this book. You can go to gardnersmattressandmore.com slash sleep dash better and we'll give you the book. Pretty cool. As if that's not cool enough. One thing that we like to uh, really hang our hat on, right? Like a lot of stores, uh, wh whether it's a mattress store or an appliance store, or, uh, somebody that sells windows or, you know, does landscaping, um, oftentimes they're going to explain to you, you know, we're the best for these reasons. I would have my customers, the thing that I like the most and hang my hat on, I really like having our customers speak for me. So all of these books are all about the happy buying experience, volume one and two. We've got back pain solved. We've got mattress replacement success. Uh, these books are actually handwritten testimonials. So people in 2022 mail back these forms and they write out their positive experience and uh, they send them back in 2022. I think that's very special today as compared to Google reviews and Facebook reviews, which online reviews are fantastic and we have hundreds and hundreds of them. But as an owner, I check the temperature on how well we're doing by how many of these we get mailed back. And it's at least we get one or two a day mailed back to us these forms. So you can learn more about us, uh, about what our customers have to say by going to gardnersmattressandmore.com slash reviews. I think that's very cool. Uh, you know, I referenced earlier about um, how we have mattresses and boxes. I'm sorry, mattresses and boxes. Um, that's not so much new technology. I actually, in my 20 years in this industry, have worked on both sides of the industry, retail and wholesale. And I sold mattresses and boxes 15, 18 years ago. So it's not so much a new thing, but what is new is that brick and mortar retailers are partnering with some of these online brands. And we actually have three uh, partnerships with online brands where we sell their product and all of that product comes compressed and rolled in a box, which makes it easier for you to take home, makes it easy to deliver and get upstairs. And we are full service delivery. But those three brands uh, we do offer are DreamCloud. So DreamCloud hybrid mattresses. Uh, we offer those. Um, we offer Nectar Sleep, both Nectar All Foam and Nectar Hybrid mattresses, which are brand new. And we also offer Harvest. Harvest is a natural, organic mattress in a box program. The nice thing about all of those products is that um, they are compressed and rolled in a box, just like you would have if you bought online. Uh, they are the same price online as they are in our store. So you're not being punished at all. And whenever they have a promotion on their website, we offer you that same exact promotion. The benefit is you get to do business locally, support a local business who you see through this show. We support our local community, uh, but you also do get to try and experience it. And that's very nice. So we offer all the perks that the online companies do right here in our store, right here in your town. And we'd love for you to invest in those products uh, with us and experience them. So we have all of those here and we'd love for you to be able to try those out. And finally, as I look to wrap up the little business segment of the show, I want to talk with you about the type of season we're in. We're coming into, you know, Black Friday, the month in which most all traditional retailers uh, go in the black, their profits go up for the year. They make their year this month and through the holiday season. You know, you're going to see a lot in the mattress world um, uh, that uh, has a lot of deep discounts, 50 to 80 percent off. And I'm here to tell you, uh, a lot of that just never is really uh, the full story or even any story. Uh, more often than not, the 50 to 80 percent off price isn't even a real price. It's a fake and inflated price. I actually have one of those handwritten reviews from a former uh, big chain store that's since gone out of business where one of their employees bought from us because they saw the real value from us, even after navigating all their discounts, all their savings all their employee pricing, we were still a lower price option. Uh, so just remember, if it seems too good to be true, it likely is. And if you'd rather be working with somebody that cares about finding the right fit for your body, 
for your sleep needs and for your budget first and not about the biggest sale at the supposed biggest discount, we'd love to be that option. We'd love to be your choice. And we'd be honored that you chose to become our customer. And we're going to work with you to find that right fit so you are happy, waking up pain-free, sleeping better, more restored every morning. And we're going to work with you to do that within your budget because we have all those price points. So that's what we'd love to do. And you can check out everything we have at gardenersmattressamore.com. So I have really enjoyed uh, being with you on this episode. It was a solo episode. It's my first one in a little while. Uh, ben had a handful over the summer, so I hope I did good. Uh, but um, I appreciate everybody watching, checking out what Mark and I had to say about giving back. We have the Extraordinary Give later this month. You'll be hearing all about it all throughout the county and all the major news sources, and it'll be in the paper and on TV. So make sure to check it out, and please look into doing Mark's $40 challenge. I think that's really smart. Uh, you go to flmag.com and all the details are there. And I'd love for one of our Lancaster Connects listeners and watchers to be one of those folks that gets featured next year. All right. So that's episode 70, Lancaster Gives Back. And oh, oh, see, there's why I need Ben by my side. And it's also great to have a great producer. We have to do the prize later. So we're getting that fired up. Let's see. Oh, Amy Larchuk. Congratulations, Amy. There's a new name, new listener and watcher this week, I believe. Uh, Amy, congrats. So you can come into the store anytime we're open and get your choice of a restaurant gift card or some of our less snore, uh, more cuddle drinkware. Your choice. Congrats again. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week on Lancaster Connects. Take care.